east side, west side, I'm back on American soil, and you're on the best side. Welcome. I'm Daniel Kellum, and I'm back, everyone, from beautiful France and England. More notably, France. England was beautiful. Um, Yeah, great trip, great trip. Finally back in the States. I just woke up from uh, an 18 hour slumber and feeling a little out of it. Um, But we're going to get through it. You know, a lot of stuff to unpack from this trip. I figured this episode is going to be about uh, my my trip across the pond once again. And um, let's get right into it. Okay. So I flew over to uh, London Heathrow. Um, and you know, that's like a 10 and a half hour flight nonstop. You get a couple meals and, um, a lot less, uh, difficult this time for me. I felt like it was a lot easier this time, but I can never sleep on those things. You know, I can never sleep on the plane on long haul flights on the plane and finally got there and spent a few days in, in London, Richmond in England and went to a couple pubs and, uh, most notably, we went to the London, uh, the London Tower, and took a tour of there. Um, took a like the Beef Eater tour. It was really interesting. Explored all across the the, the area and the land. And what I didn't know is that people uh, live there. There's like little neighborhoods in the London Tower, and um, people who are who uh, work on the premises or the military there, they live on there with their families. You can kind of see little bikes outside and. It's it was pretty interesting. It was pretty interesting. Um, also, the uh, the crown jewels are located there, and we decided to go in there to take a look. Um, however, uh, half of them were missing because of that guy's coronation this past weekend. So they came in and they and they looted the place the day before, I guess, which is a pretty cool occurrence because it's so rare. Um, it was just funny, like seeing, uh, this, this jewel or whatever it said, it had like a little sign placard thing. This jewel's not available for the King's coronation. And, uh, I thought it was kind of cool, but also pretty disappointing <laughs> of all the, of all the damn times, you know, I guess, you know, that, 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 that queenie lived a long time. So pretty interesting there. And then I met up with an old friend, uh, and his wife for, we did, my girlfriend and I did for a, for a drink at a pub. And it was, the name of the pub was, um, the Dickens Inn. Very beautiful pub from the outside. There's like hanging flowers and, uh, it's right on the water. And, um, I could, I could have been there all day, but you know, we had to go back and, um, but it was good seeing him, seeing his wife again, uh, be sure to visit them next time we go over there. Yeah, all right. And let's see, what else did we do? Went to a uh, sushi place with my girlfriend's family. Uh, one of the small, you know, eight-seat restaurants where the sushi chef is like mad at you all the time and just yells at you and teaches you how to eat. And uh, it was a delightful experience. Sushi was fantastic. You think... Um, I don't know, maybe in my head I thought like sushi fish wouldn't be that good over there. Um, but on the contrary, it was fantastic. And uh, he had this um, roll that was kind of his, his creation, I think. And it was fantastic. It was called the Hanana Roll, and it was amazing. Um, so Hanana, sushi place in Richmond. If you're ever over there, check it out. Um, just be sure, just be ready to be yelled at by him, basically. Um, and then off to France. Off to France. What's their, what's their, uh, what's their song? France, France national anthem. Here we go. What's their, what's their national anthem? Uh. Wait, was that it or not? 
or is this it? This is that what it is. Okay, so that's it, yeah. Uh, written in 1792 by Glond, Claude Joseph Rouget de, de Lille. Okay, so yeah, dun, 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 that's what it was. Um, however, we did not fly into Paris. We flew, in, we, our stay was in the south of France. Uh, so we flew into Marseille, 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 Marseille Airport. However, before we flew in there, we, um, we failed to check in the night before to our plane, we, but, you know, we thought it wasn't going to be a big deal, right? Boy, were we wrong. Were we wrong. Um, the, the, the flight was overbooked. And so from then we kind of figured we were fucked from right there. Um, show up to the airport and the woman at the front register show, uh, told us that, uh, the flight was in fact overbooked. And if we, tr- you know, if we got there early and tried and show them our boarding pass, they might be able to get us on this flight. Um, so we got there. And from then on, the stress was just on. Uh, I couldn't even eat, really. I just wanted to get to that gate. Um, got to the gate. She said, okay, give me your, give me your tickets. And we gave her our, board, our boarding passes. And it turns out the flight was overbooked by 30 people. 30 people. And uh, no idea uh, how that happens. Apparently, there was um, an airstrike. And I thought it was like a missile launch. No, it was a air traffic controller strike. <laughs> I thought I was like, I'm not getting on this plane now. Um, overbooked by 30 people. And uh, we were the one of the first ones to give them our boarding passes. So she said, okay, wait here. And once everyone boarded on, she started uh, naming off who can get on the flight. And she named off 25 people. And guess who were the five people? One of the, the two of the five people that I didn't get on. That's right, my girlfriend and I. So we uh, were panicking, and we went straight to the uh, registration, the you know another reception desk. And meanwhile, this family in front, family of like four or five in front of us, who were on the same flight, couldn't couldn't get on. Um, uh, I guess they showed up late or something. I don't know, but they. Or maybe they were on another flight. But anyways, they they were being told that they had to stay overnight. And my girlfriend was like, hell no. I was like, hell no. And so we told them, like, hey, our family's on that on that flight, you know, uh, going over there. And um, we have to be on this flight. We, we, we cannot wait a day. I was not going to wait another night while everyone was having fun over there, you know, my girlfriend didn't want to do that. And I didn't, didn't want to do that either. So after, uh, pleading our case, we finally got on a flight for six hours later for like a two thirty flight. Not so bad in the grand scheme of themes, things. And, um, from then on we said, okay, so are our bags on the flight? Yes. Your bags are on the flight. Um, we, we took them off this flight. We're going to put them on, on that flight. Okay. Bags are on the flight. We're good. We show up to the next, we show up to the uh, boarding or the gate for the next flight and, sh- and, uh, same thing happens. We have to give them a boarding pass. Okay. Wait here while everyone boards. We go, oh fuck this one, uh, French woman, very flamboyantly dressed. She was pissed cause she had to go through what we went through on the first one. She was going through that now and, uh, she was screaming and that been at them in French and, and, uh, <clears throat> It was quite a sight to see. Anyways, um, yeah, did a, uh, um, waited again, and luckily we got on. Luckily, the one of the British Airways, British Airways, by the way, is the, is the airline um, in, in in question here that we're talking about. And the woman finally comes, like, okay, these two, these two are getting on, and we're like, thank you. We said our bags are on this flight, right? Yes, the bags are on this flight. Bags are on this flight. We get on, and uh, we flew, 
it's like an hour, hour and a half flight from London to Marseille, south of France. And um, you think it would be a little longer than that because of the drast, drastic uh, weather change. Um, it was, you know, the, it's two different climates. Um, Marseille is a little bit like, or the south of France is a little bit like, uh, obviously, you know, wine country, but there's a lot of California climate in there. So it kind of f- reminded me of, ow, I hurt my arm. Kind of reminded me of California in a way, in a lot of, uh, <clears throat> in a lot of senses. So yeah, we finally landed and, uh, okay, we're, we're here. We're in France. Let's get our bags. We waited at the, at the, you know, baggage claim and we waited, we waited. And then we saw the sign that said delivered. <clears throat> they never put our bags on the plane. So we, <laughs> we didn't know what the fuck to do. We went to the uh, lost and found, had to, you know, file a claim, gave us a receipt and uh, we were on our merry fucking way. So we went, uh, fi- we got picked up by her family and we flew in, I mean, we, didn't fly, we, we, we drove into this little uh, town, village called uh, Lourmarin. Marin. Uh, but first we had dinner at this amazing, uh, I guess like a chateau. <clears throat> we had dinner on the way there and uh, amazing place. But I couldn't think about that. I was in, you know, my, my gym shorts, my sweatshirt, and everyone there was dressed in, you know, um, their nicest clothes. And <clears throat> sorry, I got a little sick on the, on the flight back. So that's why I keep doing this. By the way, I forgot to mention it is the summer of linen, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. It is the summer of linen. I have like three linen shirts. It's the summer of linen. I'm Riviera, Riviera chic, <laughs> Riviera, Riviera chic this summer, summer of linen. When I see you in person. We should be wearing linen together. Okay. Had to get that out, out of the way. I was going to say that at the beginning of the podcast, but went over my head. Anyways, we went to that uh, great dinner, and then we went into uh, uh, Lu- Lourmarin, L-O-U-R-M-A-R-I-N, and a uh, little, little sleepy town, but, but um, a lot of tourists go there and a lot of nice marketplace shops. Um, we, we stayed at this Airbnb there that was pretty good pretty it was really nice it had like a hot tub um you know and uh we were expecting like you know because it's it's a really you know the architecture is old and um you know if you look at pictures of it it looks really old but we went and we were like thinking that we were going to be staying inside this old place but we went inside and it was all like um it was really modern but yeah it was like renovated and it was really nice um, and then, you know, no windows over there have screens. So bugs just go in any time. That was kind of, a. <clears throat> I guess it wasn't really a problem, but from like seven o'clock to eight o'clock for like an hour where like bugs were going around, flying around. And then and after that, you know, just open it up, open the windows up and it was fine. But yeah, that was the main, um, that was my main, uh, one of the main gripes. <laughs> We'll get into that later. Um, but yeah, uh, little little uh, fun facts about this town we were in. I had to look it up. And uh, Lua Marin has been settled for at least a thousand years and was probably a Neolithic campsite before that. A fortress was first built at the site in the 12th century and was rebuilt in the 15th century. In fifth, here, Here's one. In 1545, the town was burned down because its population was predominantly Waldesian, Waldes. Waldensen, Protestant. <clears throat> now, isn't that a fun fact about this town? Beautiful town, though. It kind of looked like a like a movie set. You know, we'd be sitting down at, at this cafe outside or a restaurant outside, and it really looked like a movie set. It was absolutely beautiful, and magical there. Um, so, <clears throat> and then onto the bags. They said your bags will be there. Waited a full day for our bags to come. Never came. So we were kind of panicking at this point, my girlfriend and I, and we said, fuck it. We're going to buy a bunch of stuff in town. So we bought a bunch of clothes in town, bought swim trunks, 
bought these uh, these white pants. These white pants, huh? Look at these. Look at these. Bought some white shorts. Um, bought some clothes, basically, and uh, gonna get them reimbursed by the airport for losing our luggage. Um, we're not even putting it on. Apparently, they never even put our bags on the flight we were on. So they finally put them on the 9 o'clock flight. And uh, then they never got picked up from the airport. You know? So, you know, fuck British Airways to the core. I, I'm i really mad at them right now. Um, and then finally, when I got to the airport, it says, it's not our problem anymore. So then we had to talk to Marseille Airport, and it became this whole fucking thing. So we waited a full day for it. Never came. And then we waited uh, another full day for it again. And by that time, we were pissed. And uh, we finally got in contact with the delivery service of the, of the, of the, you know, the bags. And he came at like 9 o'clock at night. And uh, I'll post the video of when we, when we get the, uh, when we get the, because I took a video of when our bags came and, and my girl was just celebrating and um it was a whole thing so our clothes were finally here and it was uh, a glorious moment it was a glorious moment um so i wanted to get that those the baggage story out of the way i wanted to uh, unload some baggage on you and and then for a day we went to this town called cassis uh, have you heard of if you're uh an uh you've drank a booze uh, it's called Creme de, Creme de Cassis. It's in a lot of cocktails. And we went to that place, that where it's from. And a beautiful town um, right on the Mediterranean. And we went to, uh, we started off and we went to this place called, let's see, where is it? Calenc de Port Mio, Miao, M-I-O-U, Miao, I don't know. Uh, but it's this, you have to do, take this little hike um, into this beach and, um, and it's like a little inlet in the sea and it was absolutely beautiful. Oh, the water was clear. The water reminded me a lot of Lake Tahoe water. Um, and it was cold. It was cold. We jumped in, we all jumped in, went for a swim and it was cold. It was pretty cold. Um, it was so cold that after a while, like my body was started to feel hot, if you know what I mean. And I was like, okay, I kind of need to get out of here. Um, but it was refreshing swim. Then we hung out, got some sun. Um, uh, yeah, hung out there for a little bit. Then we started to get hungry and we hiked back into town, the main town of Cassis. And we ate at this place. And it was called like Beach Beach. It was like surf, surf. It was like two words. And um, what a view. You know, had, you had a view of the sea as we ate lunch. And it was amazing. It was amazing. We went with... Uh, her, her family, her brothers and sisters and uh, their significant others. That was kind of like our beach day, our uh, fun beach day. Um, I'll be shouting them all out at the end of this because they all are like, you know, what the hell? You didn't shout me out last time. So be sure, be sure to do that. Don't worry. Um, so then on the later part of our uh, uh, trip, we moved into, we moved out of the Airbnb and we just walked, I think it's like five, uh, it's like a 10 minute walk to five, 10 minute walk down the street, same town, the Lumerin. And it, and it, and we moved into a chateau of some sort called Le Gallionet in Lumerin. And it's this beautiful property that has, uh, it's kind of like an estate has a, had a massive pool. Um, you know, the town was nearby. So you can go to the shops and restaurants, um, I'm just, I'm looking at like a slideshow right now. Yeah, we're, it, it's absolutely beautiful. It was like, it was literally like a storybook, you know, and then the frogs at night, you know, you slept with, you slept at the windows up, you hear the frogs and uh strange birds there too. I heard, was hearing these birds and they sounded like little bottle rockets. And I was like, so we're shooting off fireworks, but no, I guess they were birds and it was odd. Anyways, um, anyways, beautiful beautiful uh property we were on just went swimming for the day and then uh um yeah and then we and then the next day so the i mean she probably should preface the whole reason why we're there is because uh, my girlfriend's oldest sister was getting married there and they planned this this whole trip 
And um, first of all, I have to thank them for that, and uh, and of course my girlfriend's family for planning it, for planning it with them, and you know getting this place, and it was absolutely an amazing experience. But um, then it became then you know a little vac- our vacation was still going, but now the now it turned into their wedding weekend, you know. So we uh, we went to their um kind of like it was like the night before your wedding you all meet together for drinks and things like that so um yeah went out to like these appetite like amazing appetizers and uh um some groomsmen did the speeches you know my my girlfriend her sister did their did their bridesmaid speech and um and yeah and uh had a great time there and then we came back for a little night swim Okay, it was a little fun night swim in the pool, and it was f- <laughs> it wasn't as cold as Cassis, but it got cold. It, it, it actually wasn't that cold, you know. It was we could be in there and like have fun for like twenty minutes, and after a while, we we're like, okay, what are we doing? Let's get out of here. So we got out, and um, yeah, that was that was a fun night too. Uh, I think on my one of my on my main on my human Instagram story we have uh i have posted some pictures from that and uh so the next day we uh it was wedding day it was the wedding day the next day and first time ever i was where i had to wear a a black a black tuxedo you know like uh um i've worn a tux before but not like the bow tie the black you know james bond style and i tell you it was nice to wear it i kind of want to wear that all the time now um should have just bought one, but you know, renting's cheaper. So, and that was the day of the wedding. So we went to uh, church for the ceremony, uh, and then it was like a, had a little mass. And um, when I was walking in, <laughs> when I was walking in, everyone was like getting in their seats, you know, before the ceremony started. And uh, <coughs> I was walking in, and you know how like the the benches in the church they have the 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 little wooden boards that your knees go on you know when you're like in prayer mode and you go down and do the prayers um i thought they like were flipped up because usually in a lot of churches you like flip them down and but it was just a board on the floor so i uh <laughs> i was kind of trying to find my seat uh, i i stumbled over it <laughs> Like stumbled over, made it made quite it made us made up not a loud not a big scene but a minor scene. Luckily, the it wasn't completely filled yet with 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 the with the people, but uh, definitely got a few stares. Uh, like, is this guy drunk? You know what's going on here? So I was like, poof, you know, just stumbled and uh, finally found my seat. And then uh, it was a beautiful ceremony, and. Um, and then afterwards, we took a ride to the uh, the reception, and the reception was at this like twelfth century monastery abbey, some sort of this incredibly old, beautiful building that um, I was told that uh, monks lived at for the for the longest time, and they uh, were like speechless monks, so they never spoke, and they all lived in this in this. Um, is a huge property too, huge, uh, like area. And I guess it was, I guess they don't live there anymore. Now it's just like a tourist place, but they managed to rent it out for this, for this occasion. And it was absolutely beautiful. So we get in there and you're doing, you know, they have canapes and appetizers. Um, when you first get dropped off by the shuttles and they had, like little octopus bites, uh, the smoked octopus, smoked salmon, smoked tuna. That was one. And then there was a, fo- a foie gras station that they seared on one side and put it on a piece of bread. Oh my, it was so good. Um, and then they had a seared salmon table, like, and then they had a seared duck. Uh, and they also, so I thought, I think they also had like raw duck that I thought was like tuna, but it was duck and it was amazing. Um, yeah, and then they had a lot of cheese, open bar, of course. So I was just drinking rosé all weekend. I after By the end of the last day of the trip, I was completely wined out on rosé and red. I uh, didn't really drink a lot of white, but yeah, completely wined out. I was like, okay, 
I had huge acid reflux and heartburn. I was like, I think that's it for me, Danny boy. And, um, yeah. And then they led us into this giant Abbey that was, uh, beautifully built and, uh, took pictures. You know, they did the pictures and I managed to, uh, be a part of some pictures and then they let all the guests in. And as they let in the guests, there was a piano in the middle of the I guess the hall and this opera singer was, I was like, what is going on here? What is going on? Where am I? This opera singer was, you know, singing this, this beautiful, these beautiful songs as people walk in and it's like, you know, of course you can't just enjoy the moment when you walk in, you have to be on your phone. Like, whoa, you know, I can't just enjoy the moment. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Um, and then from there they did, um, uh, the groom, Alex, uh, did, did his speech. And then uh, my girlfriend's dad, um, uh, did his speech and just made everyone cry. Of course, uh, I was definitely tearing up. And the night before forgot to mention this during the bridesmaids, um, speech, uh, my girlfriend's, uh, one of my girlfriend's sister's boyfriend, Tony. Hi, Tony. Uh, he was bawling his eyes out after because they the the they kind of did like a joint speech bridesmaids and he was bawling his eyes out and and then you look at me and i'm like good job babe and then they told me look at tony right now he's just bawling and i'm like oh my what are you doing man what are you doing so anyways got some shit for that um, but yeah, then when, when, uh, when, uh, their dad, my girlfriend's dad did his speech, I, I started crying too. And then of course I look at Tony's bawling again, his eyes out. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, also we had like a plus one day where, you know, everyone was all the, the family was doing their thing and we had a plus one day and me and Tony just got drunk and, uh, and, uh, and also hung out with, um, her brothers, uh, significant others. So it was like a huge plus one day. Um, and, uh, got it, got to mention Tim in there when, when, uh, Monica and Tim came, they're also American. So held it down with me, uh, had a little plus one time with, with Tim as well. And, uh, yeah. So then afterwards, after the, uh, speeches, we all went into this amazing like hallway that wrapped around and had dinner and, uh, it was an, it was just one amazing level after another of, of stuff. And, um, it was all like a dream. You know, I, I used to read word up magazine and, um, had amazing dinner. And then, uh, uh, I was really gassy too the whole time. Like I was, I had to get up and walk out and just, I was just farting. I was just farting. And you know, you, you know, when you fart, you have to fart and your stomach hurts really bad. And then you just go for a walk and just fart for like 10 to 12 seconds. And, um, just you you could feel your stomach just deflating. I had like four of those. I was like, okay, I need to lay up the cheese or something. Um, and then after dinner, we got led into the final stage of the reception. And that is. And that was had the dancing part, two open bars, you know, a tiered live band. I was like, what the hell is happening here? And they were singing all the hits. They were amazing, amazing band. And uh, just danced the night away. Um, couldn't, I didn't want to walk to the, there was a, you know, bathroom is way down the road, not way down the road, but, you know, a good walk. So I just... When I had to pee, I kind of just hopped the fence, went a little out of bounds area and peed in the bushes. And that became my little pee spot. And then it came back, you know, no one ever saw, hopefully. Classy place. And yeah, night ended late, came back, um, passed out, woke up and was extreme. I took an ibuprofen as soon as I woke up and that helped. But then we uh, had to... But then, uh, the, you know, the last event of the trip was going to this, um, another like estate chat, you know, I went to like a <laughs> state or chateau kind of, um, uh, place that was owned by, uh, the groom Alex's, you know, family. So they were gracious enough to 
invite us there for a little barbecue. So, um, again, beautiful place. But when I got there, you know, the car ride, when I got there, I was hung over like top three hangovers in my life. And I was about to throw up in the car ride there. Um, when I got there, I scoped out the place, saw a little like bed in the, in the shaded area. And I said that I'm going to be there for the next hour. And, uh, my girlfriend was gracious enough to get some food and then bring me like a beer and I ate some food, drank a beer. And then once that first beer went down, I was, I felt completely better again. <laughs> I was hung over like every morning on this trip and just how I just restarted was you just keep drinking, keep drinking, uh, <laughs> hair of the dog. Um, so, and then they also had like a frosé machine, like, like a fr- frozen rosé machine. And I was just drinking that. And by the time that, you know, by the time I was down on those, it was, feel, it was, I was feeling good again. And all the, it was interesting. All of the bar, all the barbecues grills there was, it was like a fire pit, but then I had like a ring of like cast iron around. And that's how they cooked, um, the meat and, uh, things this whole trip. And it was really interesting. And so, uh, they made some hamburgers. They were pretty good, you know. Um, and they made some sausages. The sausages were actually really good. I mean, I don't know why I say them actually, because, you know, they have good pork in France. From my, from what I, my limited time in France, um, I saw that, I've noticed that their cow, you know, their steak, their beef is not really on par as, you know, as opposed to America. However, their pork and their pig um, is really good. Um, that's that's kind of what I noticed when I was there. So um, could be wrong, you know. Maybe just where I was at, or just you know, I was there for what five days or something like that. Um, just for my limited time there, that's just what I noticed as an American tourist who loves meat. Is they have amazing pig there, amazing uh, you know pork, uh, the sausage, the little little sliced, you know. Their sandwiches, the bread, the cheese, the wine. It was all amazing. Um, yeah. So we had, so we spent some time there on the last, last day. Had a little, uh, it was nice. You know, they were very, uh, uh, accepting, you know, cause they had the British flag and they had the American flag on either side of the tent, um, in France. <laughs> it was like, I was like, okay. And beautiful area, beautiful area. Um, and then, uh, I was like, all right, all right, you know, get get the hell out of here. So we went back to our, uh, went back to Le Galliene, our our place for the last night there, and that's where I like I just just drank as much wine as I could until I, I my body physically couldn't anymore. Um, <coughs> and yeah, and then we flew the next morning, packed up. You know, we, we, everyone who went on this trip has been just depressed ever since, you know, <laughs> like, like, oh my God, we missed it already. So flew back to, uh, London from Marseille and then had like a five hour layover in London and then flew back to LA again, nonstop. And, uh, this time I actually slept. I was actually pretty surprised. I actually slept on that flight for a few hours coming back, landed in LA Los Angeles, LAX, landed at about, um, when did we land? Nine, something like that. Didn't get home until like 1130 because we now live a little further down south. And the first thing we got was Wendy's. <laughs> first thing we got was Wendy's and the next day we got Mexican food. <laughs> so, um, overall great trip. Amazing trip. Let's, 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 let's do a little shout out to everyone. Because you're first, Tony. Tony, uh, I love you. Here we go. Okay. Tony, uh, Bella, Eleanor, Nor, uh, James, Joe, Sarah, Monica, Tim, Jonathan, Alex, Peter, Carol, Isa, Finian, Grace, uh, Ulysses, and then, of course, the bride and groom, Elizabeth and Alex, congratulations. Thank you for an amazing, 
amazing week. Probably the greatest trip I've ever been on in my life. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, that is uh, my France trip. We we have we have questions. We're not done yet, folks. But that is the France trip. Summer of linen. Summer of linen. Riviera chic. Riviera chic. Okay. Um. Yeah, amazing to be. It is amazing to be back in America. Uh, it's great. It is nice to be back, be back home, you know, uh, but amazing trip. So our first write in, Oh, wait, look at me. I'm so unorganized today. So unorganized. Here we go. Hold on. Hello. Okay, we got a couple of questions. Okay, let's look at it. First one is from Courtney from Tracy. <laughs> Hi, Courtney. All right. Hello. If you could hang out with five NBA players, excluding any Warriors, who would they be? Separate question. Do you watch Impractical Jokers? Courtney from Tracy. <clears throat> Hi, Courtney. Thanks for writing in. Um, if I could hang out with five NBA players that aren't on the Golden State Warriors. Uh, I made a little list here for you. My first one would be LeBron James because um, I love LeBron James. He's, of course, even though we're playing against him, the Warriors are playing against him right now. He is enemy number one, him and Anthony Davis, but never uh, still respect him greatly. Luka. Luka seems like he has a lot of fun in the offseason. Huka Doncic. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler, you he's an amazing personality, an amazing player. Giannis Antetokounmpo, same thing. Giannis, I would hang out with Giannis. And then last but not least, a guy who's not a star, because you know I, the four I picked are stars. And one guy's not a star, but uh, he's a star to many, and that's Boban Marjanovic. Marjanovic, I believe, but Boban. So LeBron, Luka, Jimmy, Giannis, Boban. Those are my five that I would that I would. Uh, hang out with. I feel like that'd be a, I feel like that'd be a good group of people to hang out with. Um, and your next question is, do I watch impractical jokers? No, I do not, but I hear a lot of, I guess, funny things about it. It's a very popular show on what true TV or something like that. Um, but no, it's a funny, is it a funny show? Do you think it is? Uh, I've never watched it. Should I watch it? I don't know. Let me know, Courtney. Thank you for writing in. Um, hope to see you, hope to hear, see you, so hope to see you soon. And I hope to, uh, hear from you writing in soon. Read your questions soon. I'm drunk. All right. On to Kyle from Tracy. Hey, French Dan. <clears throat> Welcome back to America. Thank you, Kyle. And there's been three more mass shootings as I've typed this, as I've typed this. Unfortunately, yes. Anyways, while traveling abroad, what were the things you missed most about America? other than the constant threat of being gunned down, of course. I'm sure you expected France to be different than America, but what was something different over there that you didn't expect, and what was something that was similar that you didn't expect? Do French people smoke cigarettes so often as in movies? I'll, well, I'm glad you're back safely in America and look forward to your response. And five more shootings. Sincerely, Kyle from Tracy, sent from my panic room because this country is insane. Uh... Thanks for writing in, Kyle. Thanks for writing in. Um, glad to be back in America. Uh, yeah, glad to be back. Let's uh, let, let's 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 dissect of the questions you wrote. Um, what was what was something different over there that you didn't expect? It was something. It was something that was similar you didn't expect. Okay. Uh, different than I did, that I. Didn't uh didn't expect was definitely like I said earlier the screens there are no screen doors I mean there are no screen windows there are no screen doors over there you just open a window and it's open <laughs> what the hell at least where we stayed at and then um the other thing is uh the concept of ice in a drink has just not um has not gone over the Atlantic Ocean yet um I thought it was just a a Europe thing, I mean, uh, an England thing, London thing, but uh, France apparently does not know the concept of ice in a drink, uh, especially where we were, where it's a warmer climate, you kind of want like an iced drink, 
and it's amazing. You know, they just drink warm drinks all the time in the heat, uh, warm milk, you know, things. Um, I asked for, you know, I just asked for an iced coffee. Uh, uh, nor, uh, one of my girlfriend's brother's girl, one of my, <laughs> my girlfriend's brother's girlfriend was fluent in French. So she was kind of like our translator for the week. And she asked them for iced coffee and they brought it to me and it was just a regular hot coffee, a hot cappuccino and a mug. And I was like, can I get like iced? Can I get, to get this ice? So she asked for it iced again. And they come back with just a little tiny cup of ice. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I pour the, the, you know, pouring the mug in the ice. And of course it's spilling everywhere. And um, yeah, ice is not a concept over there. Um, uh, yeah, the ice, the screen windows. What else was different over there that I didn't expect? Uh Um, I guess, you know, there, the food is amazing there. Food's amazing there, but it, if you think about it, it is, you know, kind of limited. Uh, you're usually eating certain amounts of, you know, you're usually, usually eating the certain, same certain things, uh, as you, as you come across there. Um, definitely more options in America. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said, as soon as we got home, we got Wendy's and then Mexican food and things like that. Um, but it's good. It's good to just, you know, eat the, eat what, eat, eat the local food there. You have to do it. Um, cause it was fantastic. Um, but after a while I was missing just a good old fashioned cheeseburger. They had burgers there. Um, I will say that they had some burgers there, but they were okay. Uh, but yeah, Mexican food, I was missing Mexican food. Uh, and then, uh, what was something similar that I didn't expect? Let me think. Something similar that I didn't expect. Um, uh, everyone's assholes over there, as a, you know, just like America. Definitely mean people. I think there's just mean people everywhere in the world. Um, that was something similar. <laughs> uh, do French people smoke cigarettes as often in, as in movies? Yes. Yes. A lot of people were smoking cigarettes there in the morning with our breakfast outside all the time. Um, luckily they were not smoking inside and, you know, indoors when we were indoors, but yes, everyone was smoking cigarettes and they all also roll their own cigarettes. So that would, you know, that's part of their morning routine. They get the coffee and they, they roll up their cigarette and then they, and then they smoke it with their, with their coffee and their, I think most, some had newspapers, you know, but yes, they smoke a lot of cigarettes there. Well, I'm glad you're back safely. Thank you. Glad I'm back too. And thank you for writing, Kyle. Thanks for writing in. Hope to see you soon. Um, and I guess that is the podcast. Uh, again, thank you to my girlfriend's family for uh, allowing me to come on to this trip. Amazing trip of a lifetime. And, um, uh, you know, can't say enough beautiful things about France. My first time ever in France. And uh, amazing, amazing trip. And uh, Summer of Linen, we're Riviera Chic. I want you guys to send me your linen clothes. Take a picture of yourself in your linen clothes. Send it to me. Um, it's the Summer of Linen. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I'll check back in with you next week. <laughs>